Hey, my people, what is going on? It's your boy Mario of Woke Up a Rebel, and I want to thank you so much for joining me for another installment of Woke Up a Rebel Reacts. I want to thank every single one of you that has subscribed to the channel already. If you haven't, then please do so right now before we get started with the actual content. Uh, please like, share this video with somebody, drop a comment, you know, of what you thought of the video, what are your, what is your take of everything that's happening at the end of this video, and yeah, let's get right to it. Okay, so we all know the man Diddy, right? If you don't know who Diddy is, it's the guy over here on the screen. And basically, if you're in the Latin community and you have no idea who this guy is other than J-Lo's ex-boyfriend, then, you know, I guess that's enough. But anyways, this is J-Lo's ex-boyfriend from way back in the 90s, okay? And he's a music mogul, bad boy records. East Coast, West Coast beef was primarily him as the leader of the East Coast and uh you know notorious big and he has a history of having artists constantly say that he ripped them off you know they never got paid what they were supposed to so the thing about diddy that made him you know infamous or famous i don't know how you want to look at it but he never paid his artists a lot of artists have come out saying they didn't get paid what they deserved that he basically ripped them off and you know it's very unfortunate you know but his legacy has been tainted for a long time in my opinion you know that diddy dirty money like I mean, is he actually named himself that or, or a group he created for a while. You know what I mean? So he's been very open about how, you know, his freak offs and stuff like that. A lot of people have come out saying that maybe he's potentially of the LGBTQ community. Hey, do what you want to do in private. But that's not what we're here to talk about. Like I said, we are here to talk about what possibly could have been what started this whole exposing Diddy type of thing, surviving P Diddy situation and what i want to talk about is the lawsuit that he filed seven months ago right against the parent company of siroc and de leon tequila siroc vodka is a brand that i'm sure a lot of you who have gone clubbing or just know of the brand know that p diddy has been the face of the brand for a long time and he's also the or was the face of de leon tequila i've never had that tequila myself but it, apparently it's like a high-end brand tequila and Diddy filed a lawsuit against that parent company. And the parent company is called Diageo, right? And that company is a humongous company. Like, they're worth, uh, if I'm not mistaken, about $80 billion, right? $80 billion plus dollars, right? When I started doing a little bit of research on who Diageo were, they own pretty much everything. Like, they own, if it's not Louis Vuitton that owns, like, all these different brands of alcohol, in my opinion, it's Diageo, right, who are up there with Louis Vuitton. Diageo owns Johnny Walker. They own a whole bunch of stuff. And I'm going to share a little bit more about that in detail in the following clips that I'm going to show you, okay? In my opinion, I no disrespect to anybody, but I always thought he was Somalian, you know? I I mean, come, I don't know. He just looks Somalian to me. I've grown up with a lot of Somalian people. I don't know if uh, anybody else shares their that same opinion. Let me know in the comments. But yeah, so what I came to share with you was the lawsuit that Diddy filed against Diageo. And I think that's what sparked everything because Diddy tried to claim racism as to why it is that Diageo was not investing enough into his brand. So I'm going to show you, share with you a clip from The Breakfast Club with uh, DJ Envy and Charlemagne. And that can probably let you know a little bit more about what went down. Okay, so here we go. Now, Diddy and Diageo settled seven months after Diddy accused Diageo of racism and under, uh, under investing in his liquor brands. Now, Diageo is the parent company, kind of like if you look at it like a record label, like an artist signed to a record label. So they usually handle distribution. They handle promotion. They usually handle marketing. And Diddy was upset and saying some of the other brands that they have, they do more for. Uh, and they do, don't do the same for mine. So they reached a, an agreement. And yesterday, Diageo said, uh, Mr. Combs has withdrawn all his allegations about Diageo and will voluntarily dismiss his lawsuits against Diageo with prejudice. Uh, Diageo and Mr. Combs have no ongoing business relationship, either with respect to Ciroc Vodka or De Leon Tequila, which Diageo now solely owns. That's pretty wild, right? So basically, Diddy is no longer a part of those brands, Ciroc and De Leon. And Anytime anybody looked at the bottles, you know what I mean? Ciroc, you already just automatically connected it with Diddy, right? If you knew about it. 
but yeah that's pretty wild right they settled out of court i wonder why so let's continue hearing what went down a little bit more he has nothing to do with Chirac and De Leon anymore. Not anymore, no. So, so basically, they either bought him out oh. or, or settled the lawsuit, basically. Correct. I wonder if Diddy uh, wasn't dealing with everything he's dealing with right now, would they have stayed in business with him? I wonder. No, because he was trying to get out beforehand, remember? He, 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 was he trying to get out or was he just trying to, you know, uh, well, he get, said get them were... to honor their contract? Because if you know, remember, remember Hove did the same thing with Bacardi, but they're still in business together. And Hove won his lawsuit. Mm. You know what I mean? So I just, I mean, I just wonder what they. But this was before all that, though. Remember, before all that, they wanted out. They were trying to find a, a way out of it. You know? No, that, I don't think they were trying to find a way out. He was just suing them. Really? Yeah. Mm. I mean, they, he was just suing them. And then remember, they their their response was, you know, even though you know he's he's trying to turn a simple business dispute into uh, a claim of racism. But Hove was different, right? Because Hove never claimed that the he never claimed that racism. Was racism. He just no. claimed that uh, they were undervaluing his company yes. and that they had to revalue the company, which is different than saying somebody's being racist, especially in today's workplace and today's business. Two different approaches. I think they both were trying to get to the same goal, though. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yep, yep. I, I just wonder. I just wonder if Diddy wasn't going through everything he's going through. Could they have you know, settled, settled that and then still stayed in business together? I don't know. Good question. Woke up a rebel. A rebel. Okay, so, I mean, what do you take away from that, right? It was very straightforward. Diddy filed a lawsuit against Diageo, which is De Leon and Ciroc's parent company. And all of a sudden, all of these allegations started coming out about Diddy. Are they both connected? Who knows? But why wouldn't they be, right? You know, our conspiracy theorists, you know, antennas go up and kind of just start connecting things, right? But it makes sense, doesn't it? And if you have no idea who Diageo is, I decided to do a little, you know, Googling. You know, I did my Googles and I came across their website, right? So this is Diageo's main website, right? And the first thing that you see or that I saw was this Bailey's um, image, right? And I noticed, uh, you know, I scroll down. This says Diageo owns over 200 brands. It says Diageo owns over 200 brands with sales in nearly 180 countries, right? They own Johnny Walker, Tanqueray. Tanqueray owns, you know, gin, like a very popular uh, gin. Smirnoff, they own Smirnoff. They own Guinness, Bailey's. They own a ton of things, a ton of things, right? Look up. Let's take a look at their tequilas that they own. They own, I haven't seen this one myself, to be honest. Astro Tequila, they own Casamigos, De Leon which Diddy has nothing to do with anymore. And Don Julio, 21 Seeds. I haven't seen any, I haven't seen that one, to be honest myself. And that's just their tequila brands. You know, that's just their tequila portfolio, right? They have a ton more things. They own Captain Morgan, you know? And so this company is humongous. Like they own a lot of brands, right? And you can see that, that equals to a lot of power. And then I decided to dive deeper and I wanted to see who the CEO of this company was. Deborah Crew. She's the CEO. And she's played other roles, previous relevant experience. You know, she's worked with a lot of different brands. Kraft Foods, Nestle, Mars, PepsiCo. Right? Here's uh, some of the logos. Crown Royale, Buchanan's, J and B. I don't know that one. But you see, there's a there's a lot of brands on their portfolio. Right? This is a very powerful company. But another thing that stood out to me was this. This right up here. ESG. Right? So when I clicked on it, you know, like it, it gives you all of this information about how they are participating in ESG. And if you don't know what ESG is. I did a little Googling again. So ESG stands for Environmental, Social, and Governments. Governance. It says it refers to a collection of corporate performance evaluation criteria that, assess, that assesses the robustness of a company's governance mechanisms and its ability to effectively manage its environmental and social impacts. So here's another. <laughs> what is ESG in simple terms? These are called, so environmental, social, and governance. These are called pillars in ESG frameworks and represent the three main topic areas that companies are expected to report in. 
The goal of ESG is to capture all the non-financial risks and opportunities inherent to a company's day-to-day -day activities. Right, so essentially from my understanding of what ESG is, it's uh, it's something that, that was started by the UN, heavily promoted by BlackRock, and look into BlackRock. You know, this is, we're not going to deep dive into that in this video, but essentially ESG is something that uh, where companies get some money, you know, from governments, they get money from investors and stuff like that, extra money to, you know, if people are following ESG procedures. And a lot of people are uh, in agreement with it. A lot of people are not. Um, who knows if ESG has anything to do with this whole Diddy and the Azure situation, who knows? But I did feel like it was something that was important and worth pointing out, right? And the uh, and I actually had no idea what ESG was until I heard uh, Patrick Bet David say it on his podcast, PBD podcast, right? So it's a very interesting thing, and a lot of companies are in this program, the ESG program, because they get a lot of funding, they get a lot of uh donations like i said just it's all it's all about money at the end of the day i mean some people may think that all oh, companies are doing it because they care about their employees absolutely not companies are doing and participating in esg because they get money and it looks good on their social score you know so it is what it is but going back to the original topic of diddy i think that maybe the esg uh stuff has something that holds weight against diddy which is probably why they settled out of court who knows what that settlement looks like but what it does look like with facts is that diddy no longer owns Ciroc or de leon so just imagine all the free promo now that Ciroc has from previous music videos where diddy dj khaled like every a lot of artists promoted Ciroc in their music videos and here we are today you know with diddy I would say he's disgraced now. Like I feel very, uh, I feel very uncomfortable playing Diddy at gigs and stuff when Jungle Royalty and I go out and DJ as Woke Up a Rebel. And yeah, I just even our last gig, you know, I didn't feel comfortable, you know, playing some Diddy or anything that had to do with him because you know, just I don't know how other people are gonna feel about it. And me personally, I don't know how I feel about it. You know, like I mean, do I believe the allegations? Some of them yeah you know what i mean like he does come off as an evil dude based on the testimony of more than a dozen people right so here we are diddy is no longer a part of Ciroc de leon i feel like he's disgraced and it all possibly started because he decided to sue a humongous company worth a lot of money a lot of power you know what i mean i would assume that liquor companies have a lot of power but I didn't realize that just one company owns so many big brands. And the reason why I mentioned Louis Vuitton is because as far as I'm concerned, the two off the top of my head, Louis Vuitton owns Hennessy and they own Patron Tequila, right? Those are just the ones that I know off the top of my head. So there's a lot of power out there, you know, in, in liquor company ownership, right? So did he decided to go after the machine? Was it something that would be advisable by many? Nope. DJ Envy and Charlemagne uh, brought up a case with Jay-Z. I don't know if it was in rela in relation to uh, Ace of Spades, his brand of alcohol, but he won. And he didn't play the racism card. So, you know, should Diddy have gone the racism card way to sue or should he have just kept it about business? Right. But could that have been what ultimately led to his downfall? going after powerful people that could actually destroy him in the media because they have that kind of money to influence uh the narrative right so let me know what you think in the comments below of how you feel about the whole diddy situation and yeah i recommend that a lot of you just start looking into these big companies you know who would have thought that one company owns so many liquor brands right and also i advise you to look into esg these are things that you should know moving forward because our world is being molded based on certain principles and policies and workplace policies. And that's why you're seeing a lot of things happening in workplaces now, a lot of changes that uh, sometimes at times don't make sense. But look into it. Let me know what you think in the comment box below. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please subscribe to the channel if you found this interesting. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Woke Up a Rebel Reacts. I am your boy Mario of Woke Up a Rebel. Please make sure you check out some of the previous videos. Hopefully you enjoy them. If you enjoyed this one, make sure you share it with somebody. Please drop a like on it. 
do everything youtube works a little bit differently than uh instagram or probably very similar right likes shares all of that stuff contributes to the algorithm you know being triggered and tickled by the content so that it can be shown to other people if you found this interesting please share it with at least one or two other people in your life that you think might be interested in this topic thank you very much have a good day peace out